In today's Cubase quick tip, I'm going to show you how to take a sample. In this case, I'm using a synth sample in C3. How to take that sample, put it on a pad, and then spread it across multiple pads uh, in a chromatic fashion by using the uh, key range feature here in Groove Agent, as opposed to taking that sample and copy pasting it to another pad uh, individually and then changing that pitch within that single pad. That's the long way to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it very easily, quickly uh, using the key range feature. All right, so I found my samples that I want to work with. Uh, this guy here, which is like a bass synth. There's C1, C2, and C3. And I'm going to map this so that I'm using the three samples. Uh, and there's going to be a spread between each sample as to how far it's going to pitch up and pitch down. So I'll drag the C1 sample to C1. I'm going to stop it from playing. C2 to C2 and C3 to C3 right there. So now what you got to do is select the sample. Let's go into edit. And I'm going to actually change these to um, until release. Because we're just going to hear it to the full extent to the very end of the sample, and that's not what we want. So now we have our sample. It's only playing as long as we hold. But the problem is we can't play it at a different note unless we actually go in and change the pitch to something like this. So what we could do uh, realistically is uh, copy paste this to a new, uh, a new pad. And now it's one semitone higher. Uh, this I will put, put back to zero. And now when I highlight this, I'll go uh, two semitones. So that works, but it's long and arduous. It's manually done. It's not, uh, not efficient. But if you see here, there's this key range. This is doing exactly that. So now I can say um, I want this to play through all these keys here. So I can click it. And when I start dragging this over to a higher pitch, you see it's moving it over. So it's doing exactly what I had been doing, but just way more efficient. And then I can also drag it down to C0. So now if I go to this page, crazy low. <laughs> um, so now I want to actually split between these two samples. So because this is going all the way up to here, this is like uh, 11 um, semitones higher than uh, than itself, it starts to get some digital aliasing with all with the with the pitch changing. Um, but this note is actually only one uh, semitone away from this from B one C two is you know what I'm saying <laughs> is this is much closer to the note here. So I'm actually going to drag this down to something like this, and with this note, I will select the key range and I'll drop it down to this note. And then I will go up to, let's keep this consistent. So I'm going from C0 to G1. I'll go to G2. And then when I go to the next page, this will go down to here and up to C4 because there's no other sample. And now when I play my keyboard, So now the sample is spread out through all across the, the keyboard. I might actually go and change this to go to C5. Let's see how that sounds. And maybe we'll actually hear the digital aliasing that I was talking about. Oh, 
That's not bad, actually. So... And these samples, by the way, are from the Yamaha PSS Porta Sound Studio 470. <laughs> A real classic, old-school, uh, cheap keyboard that... Uh, I, it's it's sampled by the music radar or music radar uh, is the aggregator of all these sample packs I think is what it is I think it might be actually a computer music or future music sample pack um, so if you're interested that's where I got it from but the great thing about working this way in groove agent is you have full control of the samples. You have the mixer that's built right into it. So you can actually go in and let's say, uh, I'll go to my pad. Oh, actually here. I'm gonna assign this to the kit mix, which is totally fine. Um, then when I go into my mixer kit mix, I'll add a studio EQ because why not? So there you have it. I have a studio EQ, a vintage compressor. This is going through the master bus of the kit number one. You only have access to four different kits. In this sense though, if I wanted to add like a stereo delay or something, um, I don't have access to the sends here, at least as far as I can tell. Um, so uh, what I would have to do is go into these samples and actually send uh, send the output to the agent and select a bus. So I can do bus one. I would have to change each one of these samples to that same bus so that they're all on the same bus. Uh, where was it? Oops. So I'd go to bus one and now it's actually going to be playing through this agent tab. And I can have the uh, the same EQ. I'll just change that and I'll go to here. So without width, you see it has a lot more punch. You can do this all within Groove Agent, which is fantastic. And now I can actually assign a send to, uh, let's say, a multi-delay. Uh, I'm going to go with stereo quarter sounds fine it's 100% wet and then I'm also going to send uh, this stuff to a reverb let's go with reverence because it's a big fancy uh, realistic sounding reverb and now I go back to my agent and then I send these to the, to the delay and to the reverb So that would essentially be the benefit of staying within Groove Agent to drop your samples on the pad. It spreads it out, spreads it over the full length of the keyboard. You can work within uh, Groove Agent with the mixer, do some EQing, whatever else you're doing. Then what you can do is just save this as a multi-program and it's built into Groove Agent. And the cool thing as well is when you have the full version of Groove Agent, you can use it in standalone mode. So all this stuff that I was doing, I can actually just not even open Cubase. I could solely focus on creating a good sounding instrument that has uh, spread over the keyboards with effects, fully processed, ready to go to start a song from scratch. And then I can whenever I'm actually going to sit down and play around and start a song, I can just open up my instance of that instrument uh, in Cubase, uh, or sorry, in Groove Agent while I'm working in Cubase. So just out of fun and to satisfy my curiosity, I'm gonna try and do the same thing in Halion, just real quick. This drop that into the program and right now it's not playing anything because there's no actual instrument in the slot rack so we're going to drag our program into it and you can see it's actually 
it's already mapped and spread it out to the keyboard. So that's convenient. And then if you want to do further edits, you can go into the edit tab. You can edit the sample. You can change the playback modes. So you have the reverse, the one shot. Um, you can set loops. You can do some slices in here. I've never actually done the slicing in here, um, but it's I think it's similar to Groove Agent. Sustain, release. The other side of this coin is if you want to go super simple, is you can have a sampler track, which is even more basic and straight to the point, and you can drag samples between instruments within Cubase is I dragged that sample on. It is a C3 note. It's on set to the root key. And it's already mapped, ready to go, done. Done like dinner. If I wanted one sample or one shot, I could do it. There is different loop modes again. Um, reverse, monophonic mode. I can even transfer this to Groove Agent if I wanted to and it opens up a new instance, it sets it to your key, and there it is. So yes, thank you very much for watching. Take care, see you in the next video.